Hello everybody, I'm Noir Mac on YouTube.com and today I'm going to be doing a quick app review for an application called Clean My Mac and basically what it does in short is it just cleans all unnecessary system files and cache files and stuff like that off your system and it really helps save a lot of disk space. And I've saved about 4 gigabytes of space running this application one time and you can run this application as many times as you want because the unnecessary files will unfortunately keep piling up with the installation of new applications and new system updates. So this is not a free application unfortunately it's actually I believe $29.95 but it really is a great application it's by a company called MacPaw, and you can find this with the link in the description, or you can just go to MacPaw.com slash CleanMyMac. So if you're a little bit about on the edge of, you know, spending 30 bucks, just try the free download. I'm sure you'll be happy with it. So here it is. I have purchased my own copy, and the first thing I want to say is that this interface is amazing. They've completely made their own buttons, as you can see down here. They have their own little tabs and stuff like that. So it really gives it a nice, glassy feel, which is what all applications should be, in my opinion. I think everything should have their own custom look. So one thing I would like to see in a newer um, edition is the buttons on the bottom move to the top and that's only because normally in applications like I'm just gonna pull up finder right here you're used to going to the top of the screen and hitting stuff and in clean my Mac you have to go all the way to the bottom now a lot of people are probably gonna say you know I like it on the bottom and stuff like that but it's just my opinion that they should really put it at the top so on the left we can choose what to erase and what to keep. So anything with this check mark will be erased when you hit remove. And anything that's not checked, like down here the applications on quick erase, will not be touched. Now if we go into caches here or logs or you know stuff like that, we can choose specifically what to delete so we can choose user or system cache files or both and one of the really nice things about this is it will easily delete any application or file on your system so if just say I needed to uninstall an application just click on applications and drag something there and the benefit of that is that it deletes all the system files like it like your preferences plist because when you normally uninstall the application, it won't actually delete those. And after a while, those files can pile up. Then we have Quick Erase, which is the same thing. It just deletes a file and completely erases it over three times. So that you're not going to have any record of it and it's going to be completely gone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Scan down here just so we can start looking at my Mac to see what needs to be erased and I did actually just recently run a scan so it's not going to catch that much and I'm just going to pause real quick while it does so alrighty my scan is completed and it found a whopping one thousand three hundred and fifty two megabytes that is not needed on my system which I think is great because it only took about five minutes to find like I said I did just recently do a um, a scan so I'm just gonna tell you what each one of these uh, little things on the left mean just so you can get a better idea of what you really want to erase and the first thing here is the caches now the cache is how your system can open an application or a website quicker the second time than it did the first time. And basically when Safari or Firefox or 
whatever web browser you use loads up a website, it saves a copy of the website in your cache folder so that the next time it goes on, instead of having to go download everything again, it'll just pull it off your system, which really makes it faster. But the only problem is they can accumulate and they pile up like crazy. So I found, they found a gig of cache files. So then we have logs over here. And these are just things like crash logs, error logs, stuff like that, that you really don't need unless you're in, in developer. So if you really do need to develop applications and need to see if they're going to crash or anything like that, don't delete this and keep it safe. Next is the language files. And you can see all these applications that need deleting language files here. And the language files come with each application when they install. And what they do is they provide like 30 languages per application. So, you know, that comes in English and Chinese, German, Spanish, whatever. And the problem with that is most people don't speak all those different languages, so they don't need to have them on your system. Then we just have universal binaries, which if you're familiar with Mac and how it runs, you will know that there are two architectures. One is the Intel and one is the PowerPC. And you each application comes with files for both systems. The only problem is you can't run both at the same time. You only have one. So this is an Intel Mac I'm running right now, so I don't need all the PowerPC files that come with applications. So I'm just going to hit remove. I'm going to authenticate this. And it's going to start removing all of my files. And I'm just going to pause real quick. All right, guys, my scan is finished. And it only took about, you know, two minutes maybe to clean a gigabyte of stuff off your system. Now, I do have to say I would appreciate it if it went a little bit faster because it did kind of get stuck in the caches a little bit. But, I mean, I think that's completely worth it to save a gigabyte of storage on your system. And, you know, a gigabyte of storage is about 114 minutes of audio. So that could be, you know, an extra 40, 50 songs in iTunes that your system can hold. So if you actively use this, you're going to have a lot of free space on your system. So I definitely recommend getting this application. It's in the sidebar if you want to check it out. Download the demo if you're on edge about whether or not you should download it or not. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody.